And so, yeah, the, this journey continues for us. We are, um, this, we, after tonight, we have two more sessions and we'll wrap up at the end of, end of June. So I hope this has been a, a great journey so far. We have learned a lot doing this. Uh, we've had some really big wins um, having doing this digitally and we pray it'll morph into in the fall having a mix of online connections but also people locally maybe getting a bunch of people together in a living room so we're we're praying about that so i encourage you to uh be praying well hey are there some people in my town in my city wherever i'm going to be that i want to be in a in a discipleship group together and so that you'd come together and come online uh, we will provide training for leaders and and talk to me if you're interested in that. And so there'll be a mix of teaching online. And then for, if you have enough people in your living room, you can just shut off the computer and, and meet there, or you'd maybe want in a, in a zoom room to continue there. Uh, but I pray that has been uh, life giving for you. So uh, yeah. So welcome everyone. Uh, tonight, uh, Molly is going to continue um, in, in her, teaching tonight so we're looking at we have a number of practices we like to that all christians we believe should have and uh, one of those is hearing from jesus and so i'm going to give this over to molly and she can take it away here molly can i pray for you no you can't yes i will pray for you Let's pray for Molly. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for Molly. We thank you, Lord, for her willingness to teach tonight. We thank you, Lord, for her, the experience of her life. And uh, Jesus, we welcome you now. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you just remove the distractions that we may hear you clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Go for it, Molly. Cool. Hello, everybody, for the second week in a row. Um, I have moved locations, and I'm now at the marina, which hopefully has a little bit better Wi-Fi, and it definitely has a better view. So if, if, if all else goes wrong, at least you have a pretty lake to look at for a little while. Um, I feel like I should start this by telling a small st story um, about last week, because I think it's really funny since last week we were talking about hearing God in the word, and now we're talking about hearing God in the world. This was the first way that I heard him right after speaking. So I, I finish my talk, whatever, and I'm immediately just filled with like the post, post vulnerability or post testimony or whatever post anxiety. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel terrible. That went terribly. I need to get to my small, small groups that they can affirm me and tell me that it wasn't that bad. Like I immediately was like, give me affirmation. I need it, <laughs> um, which is like the opposite of what I should have been doing. Um, anyways, I go to my small group, and obviously that, like, when I go in the room wasn't like, oh my goodness, Molly, that was amazing, because it was no big deal. Like, it was absolutely no big deal, and the girls were just sweethearts, and they were having a good time like they normally did, and it was beautiful. But I was sitting there, and I was like, I need somebody to tell me that <laughs> I didn't suck, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, and then, right when we get to actually talking about the talk, which I was like, this is my moment. Somebody's going to calm my anxiety for me. Um, then the power in my house went out, <laughs> which was really funny. <laughs> so then I was like left on this cliffhanger and feeling super anxious and looking back at it, like I really should have just prayed or like gone to my Bible or something like that. But instead I went to social media to numb my anxiety, <laughs> which is, I'm really just showing a bunch of bad practices. But the first thing that I looked at on Instagram this is, this is what it said. Surrender the need of striving to be the best or always right, and focus instead on leaning into light that reveals all things, all that is good, and all that stands to be corrected and redirected, which was a little bit convicting and also peace-bringing, um, and I was able to kind of, like, it was kind of like God just shouted at me, like, you, you did not speak so that you could be justified by your words or by other people, but you spoke because you're justified through me. And um, I'm sure that whatever I said that was not from God, I'm hoping fell on dead ears. And um, I, yeah, I, yeah, it wasn't up to me for you guys to take something away from that. Um, but 
it's God that speaks through me. So that was a little bit <laughs> of me kind of relearning what I was talking about or what I'm going to be talking about um, in that God shows up in the world and he speaks to us um, when we need it and where we need it. So anyways, that was just a mini story um, that was maybe not actually that mini. That might have been like five minutes. I'm sorry. Um, anyways, last week we talked about hearing God's voice in scripture specifically, um, and we talked about what it actually means for most people to hear God's voice and how it's not like a loud, booming voice, um, and that if it's not like that for you, it doesn't mean that he's not speaking. We talked about hearing him speak in scripture and how scripture is the living and active word of God, how it's authoritative and how it's a gift to us um, so that we, can, that we can hear and know is his word. Um, that means he speaks to us there. And we talked about how hearing God speak in the word is no less spiritual or it's no less of a gift than hearing him in other places. It doesn't make you like a lesser Christian in any way. Um, we talked about how it's not, we don't need to take it into our own hands to find ways that we would prefer for God to speak to us. Um, but we need to be listening. Um, and how the word is a wonderful outlet that he's promised. I hope you guys all remember this. Um, but my homework for you was to spend your week honestly listening and being willing to learn from what the Lord has to say. And um, not just being present, but actually participating with him. Um, and this week we're going to talk a little bit more about hearing God's voice. Um, but instead of focusing on just hearing him in scripture, we're going to talk about how God shows up in the world. Um, there are so many ways that God gets our attention and speaks to us. And something that's been really interesting to me in the past year is how he uses things that are culturally relevant or personally relevant to get our attention. Um, things that he knows are significant to us. Um, and a, a large scale example of how I've seen this in the world is in Nepal, something like 90% of conversions happen because people either witness or experience healing. And that's something that is very like culturally relevant um, and religiously relevant. It's something that gets people's attention and is specific to those people. Um, in, it's often um, Muslims are converted because they see God in dreams, which is something that is culturally and religiously significant to them. Um, and this is like a really large scale thing. But I also think that God does this in ways that are really personal to us um, and not yeah, to each person in ways that, like, he, he knows will get, us, get our attention and knows that um, we'll have significance. Um, but, yeah, because God knows, God made you. You were fearfully, or, yeah, fearfully and wonderfully made. And he knit you together in the womb, and he knows, he knows you. So he speaks to you in ways that are significant to you. Also in the world, word, but in the world, I mean. Um, yeah. Some common ways that I've experienced or heard testimony of are things like God planting seeds of words in our lives, words that come straight from his word, words like you're enough or you are beloved or I'm protecting you or I've made you new or trust in me or you are justified through me or you are forgiven. And for a long time, um, something that God reminded me was of was that he was fighting for me and that I only had to be silent, which is Exodus 14, 14. Um, but just because it was in the word doesn't mean that I was separate from hearing those words in the world as well. And those were spoken to me like time after time after time after time again. We even had a whole fall hike that was centered around the book of Exodus. Um, and it felt like every single day people would talk, Hillary, you were one of those people. And it would just, it would sound, it would sound like what God had been speaking to me for months and months and months and months and months that he was fighting for me and I only had to be silent. Um, and it was reminded to me in books that I was reading and people I was talking to and music that I was listening to and journaling prayers and other people's testimonies and devotions that I would hear and sermons in church and podcasts and all these things that, that had no clue God was doing his work. I can guarantee you that Hillary, when she was planning her Devo, didn't think, pretty sure Molly needs to hear this one, so I'm going to throw it in there. No, it was, it was God that was orchestrating it all. I'm pretty sure that Bob Goff, when he was writing his book, wasn't like, this one is for Molly and Camrose, Alberta. Like, no, it is, it is God showing up in those places. And that is God using the world around us. I'm sorry for these bugs. I'm going to keep swatting at them, though. Um, it is God using the world around us to speak these things that he, he is 
already been speaking to us that comes straight from his word to us over and over and over again to to um, re-emphasize these things um, through repetition, um, through not only the Bible, but also these other outlets, I guess, that get our attention. Um, he speaks good words that he is already teaching, or he shows us roots that he's already been digging up, um, that he places in our worldly lives around us as reminders of his good word and our call to believe and to abide. Um, but the key to all of this, to hearing God in the world and through other people or music or in our own journaling or books or spiritual disciplines or whatever it is that you hear God in where you feel really connected to him, um, the key to it all is that it will all align with scripture. And if, you've, if you're ever hearing words that are confusing or that you can't tell if it's God's voice or your own, go back to his word and text, test it against what we've been promised is true because he has promised that to us. Um, and if the voices that you're hearing in the world are shaming and telling you that you're not good enough or you didn't do enough for God to love you or, or that you will, you'll be good enough if only dot, 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 or if the voice is telling you to hurt yourself in some way or to hurt another person in some way, like emotionally or whatever it is, if, if it's telling you to make an idol of something that's not God, then that's not God's voice, no matter, like, even if it comes to you in your journaling in a way that you typically see God, it has to be tested against scripture. And I'm not saying that the words that you hear God speaking over you in the world and in the, in the Bible won't be convicting. We talked a lot about that last week because he does convict us, but conviction isn't shameful. Um, and conviction doesn't attack your identity as a beloved child. So when you hear these voices from places, from social media, from um, people around you, from toxic relationships, um, that's, you still have to remember that that's not God's word. Um, and I think actually toxic relationships was maybe one that I should talk on for a little bit more than I planned. <laughs> so sorry to the notes, but toxic relationships goes so far past just romantic relationships. They can be with siblings or with friends or with parents or with whole communities that, that you invest yourself in. And I think that a lot of times we can, we can decide that those people's or those communities opinions and voices have more weight in our life because of because of how much they mean to us emotionally um and not not necessarily consider that that their voice is not god's um and even even people that really do have sound um theology or that have really similar beliefs as you um and that sometimes you do hear god speaking through them and it it is something that god is been repeating to you that doesn't mean that every word that comes from their their mouth is is god's voice we can't start making idols of the people around us just because we love them and just because most of the time what they're telling you is sound theological advice um that is idolizing and like i love the girls in my group a lot but if i just decided that everything that they told me in that group was that was truth and that was like my own bible that's that's not me listening to god that's me listening to the world so when we listen to the to god's voice in the word or in the world sorry those words are too similar for me um it, when we listen to god in the world it's it's key that we're actually we're listening to his voice in the word too because we can't just start deciding that the world is our bible the world the world is not our bible the world is full of sin and we are in bondage to sin. And just because I, I am a Christian, I hope, I pray that, that you guys don't listen to every single word that I say and decide that that is, that is absolute truth. Because I've, I've probably spewed like five minutes of heresy already. Who knows? Um, I, I don't speak truth. God, God is truth. And the Bible is truth. So even as I'm speaking to you now, this is a devotion. But, and God can speak through me but I'm not God. <laughs> and not every word that leaves my lips is going to be God's word. Um, yeah, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. But when you're listening to God in the world, don't decide that the world is God. God decide that God can sometimes choose to speak to you in the world. And it's an amazing thing, and it's a gift, and it's special. But the world is not God. God, God is God of the world. Anyways, back to the notes. Sorry. Um, 
Okay, the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is spiritual disciplines, because we've talked about that before, and we've told you about a few of them, um, but I personally didn't really understand the purpose of spiritual disciplines for a very long time. I thought they were kind of a way to make reading numbers a little bit more interactive and fun, you know, or like a way to make me a, a better Christian, like, oh yeah, I, I know what Lectio Divina is, you know what I mean? Check that off, my Christian box just leveled up a little bit. Um, <laughs> no, what I have learned about spiritual disciplines is that Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what I've learned about spiritual disciplines so that I don't just spew again. Um, um, what I've learned about spiritual disciplines is that they are an opportunity for us to listen and to be intentional about our listen, listening and to ask for guidance and clarity or healing it for wounds that God has dug up and shown us that we have, for lies that we believe about ourselves or that we believe about him, um, to repent and to submit before the Lord honestly and to listen to him, not to make space for God to speak to us as if he wasn't speaking before or as if he needs us to create an outlet for him, but to quiet your soul so that you can truly listen. Um, and I've learned recently how this isn't a word, but in understandably, like I can't even fathom how large the power of prayer is and that God honestly does answer our prayers. Um, maybe not in the way that we want or expect or as soon as we want, but he hears them and he answers them according to his plan. And the Bible says to knock and the door shall be open to seek and you will find. And I think a lot of times our prayers or my, my prayers at least kind of turn into God, please give me this or please give me that, or please don't let this happen. But recently I found so much freedom in praying that God would show me his will. And I've just found so much peace in listening after praying that. Isn't it so cool? Like we talk all the time about this God who has this amazing and huge plan for us um, that is so much better than the plan that, that we have. But then still I want my plan to happen. And I don't even, I so much of the time, I don't, I don't even give God the time to show me what his plan is or to think about how much better it is than my plan. I just pray that my plan would happen and and, and I'm disappointed if it doesn't, but I've, I've just found so much freedom recently in praying that God would show me his will um, and then leaving the opportunity to listen and to learn what that is. And my point with that and spiritual disciplines, sorry, that, that needs to be connected, um, is that spiritual disciplines, I find even with that, I find sometimes I'll be journaling or prayer journaling or sitting in silence and I'll be praying because I know that there's power in prayer and I'll be praying for everything that I want, but, and not really listening at all. Um, and not, not even allowing space for myself to see what God is, is saying to me. Um, so in my spiritual disciplines, in my journaling, in my, in my, um, Lectio Divina and my silence and like whatever your preferred spiritual discipline is. And if you don't have any, you should look into them because they're really awesome. Um, I would encourage you to just pray that God would show you his will or that God would show you his heart for somebody that you're having an issue with or just spend time listening in, in, your, in your spiritual disciplines. They're not all about what you do. It's maybe more about paying attention to what God is doing. And I think I, I often forget that. Um, yeah. Anyways, so it's so important that we're listening and that that's really... Um, what I want people to get out of this, that God has a, a plan for you and you're not forgotten. And he hasn't just decided that you are left on your own in this world to figure it out on like in your own strength. But he, he is, he has a plan for you and he is speaking to you and guiding you along the way, even if it's not obvious. Um, and sometimes it's hard to listen to God and all the chaos of the world when we're told every day what voices we should be listening to whether it's our friends or the christian communities that we're in or right now it's the social justice things um and or the police or the law or we should be listening to this politician or we should be listening to this influencer and it's it's hard in in all of this chaos to to quiet myself and decide that i want to hear what god has to say and not what people has to have to say in my moments of anxiety I learned in, in, like last week that I immediately want to know what other people have to say. And I, I, my instinct wasn't to know what God has to say. Um, and it's practice and it takes time, 
but it's not that God's not speaking and it's not that God has abandoned you and it's not that God's forgotten you or decided that you are fine left on your own. It's that this world is chaotic and we're sinful and sometimes we forget to listen. So once again, I would encourage you all to be listening and to be in his word and to be doing these spiritual disciplines um, not because it makes you a better Christian, but because, because it brings you so much peace. Um, and it, it, there's so much to know about our Father that we have no clue of because, well, I at least just run around in this chaotic world thinking that, you know, what matters to me is the most important thing in the world or the most important thing that God has for me. But he has so much to teach us, if only we would listen. Um, anyways, so I have a friend on this call and her name is Siri and she's really lovely and I really really love her story recently about God um, and listening to God and hearing from God so she's gonna share a little bit um yeah anyways I hope that you guys got something out of this it's really weird talking to a empty face of screens so prepare yourself Siri but I'm gonna pray for you before you speak Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Siri, and I thank you for her willingness to share um, a testament to your goodness and your faithfulness and um, to you speaking to her and guiding her in this crazy world. Um, I thank you for the love and the light that she shares with all the people around her and for um, just her her true passion for, for sharing you and for spreading your word um, to all the nations. I Pray that you would bless her and keep her, that you would make your face shine upon her and be gracious to her, that you would look upon her with favor and give her your peace. Um, yeah, bless her words tonight, God. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Molly. All right, I got to turn off my video because my Wi-Fi is really bad. But, yeah, for a while I was just in a place where I did not ever see myself going to Bible school and I was just so focused on the morals and standards of our society, our society that um, I just didn't really think secular education was any less important than biblical um, education. Um, and then God kind of twist, um, changed my mindset on everything and showed me a completely different route. Um, so near the end of high school, God really just started to press the thought of helping people on my heart. And I've always had a calling to Hawaii, so uh, he knew I needed Bible school, and he pretty much lured me in with the burning passion in my heart to help people. Why, like, that's why I chose the medical DTS. And um, as most of you know, my time there got cut short due to COVID-19. But close to my, the end of my time there, I just really started, um, e even before I knew I was going home or anything, God just started whispering a seal bi to me, and he whispered in ways that I knew that he knew I would understand, like in words as I journaled and just songs I'd hear and verses and even people. Um, and then first when I started hearing these or seeing these signs, I was like, nah, man, I'm not leaving Hawaii. There's no way I'm going to Camrose. Um, and the longer I pushed it away, the more it burned inside my heart and just made me eager to learn more. And I realized now that um, now that I was in a place where I could actively press in and hear all that God was speaking to me, I was realizing all that he was calling me to do and learn after pushing it away for so long. So the random words I had written down in my journal previously and the random verses or drawings that I had just thought of <laughs> began to make sense, and I just went through a time of revelation and breakthrough. And I realized that that was God speaking to me and grabbing my attention throughout the entire scenario, which is re really, really cool. Um, and... This one time I was just um, journaling and praying and God gave me the verse Isaiah 48 verse 3 to 4 and it says, I foretold the former things long ago. My mouth announced them and I made them known. For I knew how stubborn you were. Your neck muscles were iron. Your forehead was bronze. And this verse was just like, it was, yeah, it just made so much sense and it just spoke directly to my situation. I was like, okay. This is super cool because, yeah, it was just so cool to see that God knew my heart posture then and he knew exactly what would grab my attention and he knew how stubborn I was. So he had to do something that would lure me in so he could grab my attention and just help me go from there. Um, so, yeah, I lived in Camrose for 11 years, so it's always just been a big place in my heart. And 
Um, after everything I've gone through after moving away, I just felt like God was speaking to me to go back to the place I first met him, which was kind of cool. And um, it's the place I was born and where my spiritual foundation was built. And to come back and bring a little bit of Hawaii and all that God taught me when I was at Bible school there. And then just also just minister to people who I had grown up with and um, people there in general and um, go to school with people who I was raised with, which is pretty cool. And um, what I find super cool is, yeah, God speaks to you all the time and everything you do in life is a part of his plan for you. You may not hear um, uh, like as clearly and you might not be able to hear what he's saying to you at first. But once you just start to get used to that and just like listening more carefully, he's able to guide you wherever he wants you to go. Um, and I have full confidence that wherever he leads me is going to be exactly where he wants me. Um, so yeah, if, if you're always pressing in, you're not going to miss what he has to say. And um, if you aren't pressing in, you might feel confused, angry, or stressed because you'll hear it, but you're not going to understand the relevance of what God is saying to you. Um, and when you begin to trust God and fill your life with him and his word, you'll see he was speaking. And um, yeah, sometimes you just have to be in the right position to hear what he has to say to you. So yeah, if you are ever in a place where you just feel like you can't hear what God is trying to say to you and you're stressing about whether or not you can hear God's voice. And even like Molly said, uh, feeling a little bit of guilt because you feel like you're not a true Christian. If you can't hear um, what God's saying, that's totally wrong. And I just really encourage you to surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you and um, just see God and be in his presence and just listen to all that he has to say. And it takes time and it takes practice, of course. But once you're in a position where God can just pour into your life, it makes it so much easier. And you're just going to go so many places after any of the strongholds or anything that kept you from hearing God's voice are gone. So, yeah, um, I hope this is helpful. And, yeah, I just encourage you guys. Siri, thank you very much. I love hearing testimonies it's like it, you're a living parable and we see jesus um came in the flesh into the world and he his spirit is still with us he promises promise never to leave us i'll be with you always including today on june 10th 2020 and yeah your story is a picture of that of god getting your attention through things in the world molly thank you for your teaching wonderful molly and i pray your power does not go out tonight so you can hear the group say thank you to you but last week was a, a kairos a, a a moment that god wanted to get your attention with a power outage molly is god is speaking to you molly he loves you thank you for teaching tonight um so molly and siri have given us some beautiful words to to think about about how jesus is trying to get our attention in the combination of the word and our daily lives and for that, for some of us, that is a huge change. Some people I know, they only want to look in the world and they don't like the idea of God speaking through a book and having authority. And, and so it's very uh, mystical and it's very much a very unhealthy, heretical kind of thing. But, and I know some that just want to, God only speaks through his word. He speaks clearest through his word, but he's also walking alongside us and willing to show up in our daily events, the highs and the lows, and to speak. And we're bringing the word and those experiences together. So God bless you all tonight as you go to your D groups to discuss how God is showing up in the word and, and the world. And we will see you next week. So have a great time. 